Hello friends, and welcome to and we're back to the channel. It's been a whole year, and there's quite a bit to catch up on. So without further ado, let's take a look at the 10 best games I worked on or created but didn't release in 2021 and maybe a little bit in 2022 and also 2020. Here we go, down to the last 10. Rosebound is a side project I was planning on making mostly to bolster my self-esteem, but as you all unveritably know, I have never experienced even a drop of gender or body dysmorphia in my nearly 36 years and have, would, and will exist in total universal harmony and don't need any artificial confidence from some idiotic flight of self-aggrandizing sexual fantasy. Most of my time went into some new characters and finishing up the storyline. I managed to also make some cute item assets that will probably make their way into some other projects, but this one's pretty dead in the water. As I'm sure many other people were, I was immensely inspired by Disco Elysium's dialogue and narrative system. This is a game about some graffiti that got me feeling sensitive and confused, and I wanted to explore those emotions. I think other queer and transgender folks might relate and hopefully enjoy the story I wrote around it, and despite how much I want to pour my burning queer soul's torment into it, I've tried to write something that avoids trauma porn altogether and focuses on how a lot of us use art and self-expression to deal with these experiences in a positive way. While I mentioned Disco Elysium as a big inspiration, Sunless Seas also deserves a mention. I really like being able to reread the entire conversation I'm in so I can catch up with myself if I get lost. I'm always surprised when a game with a lot of reading grabs me, but I think it's due to how quickly you're expected to retain things in most games. Hi there. How's it going so far? Just checking in to see how you're doing. Making sure you're not bored. Everything beyond here is smooth, easy sailing. A side note though, all of the games from this point forward take place on a planet called Coelus. What the fuck are you talking about, you may be thinking. Well, <laughs> for those who don't know, nearly all of the games I am working on take place on the fictional planet of Coelus, a far off world I have been developing in my free time since my teens. Back to the list. Eight. Sports games. You uh, guys like sports, right? I even made menu music for this one. Didn't get very far otherwise. I did learn how to do video overlays, and I worked out a nice skin tone and hair tone slider system for the character creator. For some reason, I got really into the UI for this game. The gameplay, however, just wasn't fun to develop. I even bought some other recent indie sports games to see what other people were doing, and kind of realized I didn't really have enough interest in tennis to continue. This ranks here because I had a lot of fun developing the characters and coming up with a story to connect each of them to the different locales I have planned. Seven. This is a smithing game where you run a sword smithing shop during one of Coalesce's ancient battles. We have our inventory with our various parts and materials. You can bookmark certain materials so they are highlighted the next time the vendor passes by. The smithing itself is done by clicking at the right time on the right part of the screen. I did quite a bit of research on how smithing actually works, and it led me down some interesting research paths, eventually accidenting upon Fred Dibna, the famous steeplejack and terrible husband, nearly derailing the project entirely. The core gameplay would be receiving orders from a handful of characters through your shop window, with your contributions and interactions shaping the course of the war. You would never quite know which side you're helping, but the tiny stories would carry through the years until the war ends. While there are tons of smithing games already out there, I still appreciated this experiment. It really helped me understand simple dialogue and inventory systems, something you may notice I talk a lot about in this video. Six. Katome started as a very limited mouse-based adventure game and somehow turned into a first-person sword fighting dungeon crawler. I have been playing too much Dark Souls and I maybe think about Elden Ring too much. This uses the TF Invasion dialogue system, and if I can manage my time right, I think it will be a fun short adventure that fleshes out the early politics of one of Coelus's first civilizations. Movement is tied to the keyboard with actions and attacks tied to the mouse. It feels really awkward to walk around right now, and my creature designs, well, let's say I got a little ahead of myself with my ambitions. We're at the halfway point. Thanks for making it this far. You're doing great. Five. Dusty Peaches, as the title may imply, is a game about running your own erotic cleaning service. 
I ended up with a copy of Honeycam Studio from a bundle a few months ago. Probably put 10 or more mindless hours into the thing. Anytime I encounter a game mechanic that sucks me in in this way, games like Loop Hero or Tropico or The Sims, where the story isn't exactly keeping you there, but there's something about managing the different parts of the game that is irresistible. So building on the parts I like, I made a simple HUD that let you drag your workers onto different job sites and set up a few leisure areas for the workers to recharge. Replaying this to make this video made me realize how much of a game I had actually made. This thing's like 50% done. The dialogue needs quite a bit of work still, and I haven't quite settled on an art style for the scenes yet. Well, okay, maybe 20%. Petrol is an idea I had when I was 14, high on Twisted Metal and Vigilante 8, an open world driving game where you bombed around in a suburban through giant oil refineries, taking down capitalism. Over the years I added to it, eventually turning it into a larger project that is the planet Coelus and all its other stories. I don't want to go too much into detail on what I have planned for this, and I think this is something I probably want to take on with the team. In the meanwhile, I do have plans to release a demo of this very janky arena mode I made. After the failure of Miracle Tennis, I decided to adapt the characters and setting for a rally racing game. Instead of using what I'd learned making petrol, I opted to create my own vehicle physics built on top of the rigid body node in Godot. This would have probably ranked number one if I had not made that decision. Making the car models was especially fun because I got to finally flesh out the designs I had in mind for petrol's cars. See, this is why I know I'm not going crazy, okay? I have a plan. All of these low poly models are either usable as placeholders, LODs, or as finished models in my other projects. This is how I work. It's a big mess, nothing makes sense or works, and then out of the blue you're like, Hey, Charlie, you did a thing. And I'm like, yeah, I've been doing the thing this whole time. All of this was going to be tied together with a visual novel style element, introducing team members and rivals through your rally adventure. The driving itself I think is almost there, just a few issues with momentum where the car behaves more like a horse. I love this project, and I can almost see a finished version in my head. I think I still need to simplify it a bit, but there's a fun little racing game in here somewhere, and I thankfully don't need to worry about things like AI in this game. Two. After adding procedural weather to the last version, I had the sudden realization that I was avoiding admitting that this project, in its current form, was doomed. So, with everything I'd learned over the past year, I put together a new build, and voila, Fish Life 2.0. If you're a longtime viewer, which I doubt you are, but if so, hello, thank you. Fish Life is my big dream game that I've been putting off since the start of this channel, but that's for good reason. I don't want to make a bad game. So here it is. We've got the inventory mechanic from Heedless Hammer. We've got the stat system from Dusty Peaches and a bunch of handcrafted low-poly assets to start off with. This got me feeling real good. I've also figured out the fishing mechanic using a hybrid version of Fruity Pie's weird rotating camera system. This looks simple, but it took me about two months to get the camera working in Fruity Pie's. Before we get to number one, I want to shout out a few prototypes of 2021 that never quite made it to the gameplay phase of development. Is there a bug in it? Whatever this thing is. Fruity Pies version 1.1 update. Sim Dice. One and a happy Since my last video, and actually in my last video, but not really mentioned, I've made a lot of progress on the gameplay in Archdroid. Most importantly is the finished inventory and equipment management systems. These are linked to recharge stations that you'll find throughout the facility that you kind of plug yourself into. There is also the most important of immersive sim ingredients, spreadable fire. All of a sudden, so many other aspects of the game started to seem possible. Another big mechanic was restoring power to the different wings of the facility. Doing so opens doors and activates recharge stations. You'll basically be finding these little fuses around the level that you can insert into different fuse boxes. So, a lot has been done, mostly behind the scenes, but this, this project's feeling pretty tight. Looking at the past year and what I've accomplished in Archroid, I'm feeling pretty good. That's why this is number one. Well, I hope that was an enlightening experience. I feel like a load has been lifted now that it's all out in the open. 
Let me know what your number one game I worked on in 2021 was in the comments, potentially shaping the direction my efforts take. And for those of you still here, it's time for the shill. If you want to support my work and help make it easier to make videos like this and continue developing these games, then you can support me either by buying my music on Bandcamp, subscribing to my Patreon, or giving me a one-time donation on my coffee. You may be wondering, what are my plans for 2022? First off, I'm trying to learn proper AI. I finally got what I'm calling simple AI working in my current side project, and I'm hoping to start implementing it into Archroid's low-level creatures. I also bought Mzzzzzzz AI course, and I hope that will help me get the more complex aspects of AI into my games. Beyond that, I have some fun videos planned that I've actually written scripts for and can safely say are on the way. Until then, uh, enjoy things. Try to enjoy things. See you next time.